What's up, everybody? Welcome into the Backliners Podcast, Agro and Barracuda, as per usual. This week, we've got a special guest on the show. Uh, it is a member of the number one seed, uh, d- just definitive best team in the SPL. No no contest. I'm buying time to make sure that my audio is working. I can't tell if Hello? it is or not. Oh, it's working. Thank Hello? you, Barry. Okay, uh, okay. It's it's Sot. It's a, it's a solo laner for the Woo! Warriors. Sot, welcome in. Thanks for thanks for joining Hello. the show, man. You guys have been having a crazy a crazy phase, uh, and it's been a lot of fun to watch. But I'm teasing you a little bit before because before we get into that, we got to talk about our brand new sponsor to the show. Uh, we're super excited to announce our brand new sponsor, Oakley. Express your style and build a look that's made for you. Oakley is a sunglasses brand that is synonymous with quality and all that kind of good stuff. I remember getting my first pair of Oakleys when I was younger, and I was like obsessed. I got them as a birthday present. I wore them everywhere. I thought I looked super cool. And then I remember that I left them at summer camp, and it was like the worst day of my little life. Uh, I was (laughs) devastated. And I've been jonesing for some Oakleys ever since, uh, which is why I'm super excited they're sponsoring the show. Because they're changing the game, and it's time to discover a whole new world of possibilities. Do you run or golf or train or disc golf, like I talk about a lot? Uh, You could also just want to look like your favorite athlete, like Lamar Jackson, Debo Samuel, Mbappe. Uh, Those are some pretty big names in the sports world. So if you want to look like any of those dudes uh, when they're wearing their sunglasses, then you need to get yourself a pair of Oakleys. They are suited for everyday eyewear with frames and lenses allowing for an extension of self, an expression of your personality. There is much more than meets the eye. And as you know, as you all know, here on this show, we are all about look good, play good. And that's why Oakley is the perfect partner for us. Right, Barra? We say that all the time, don't we? Woohoo! <laughs> Thanks for that. We don't leave our house in the morning without our Oakleys. And listen up, because it's officially almost summer, which means you need to upgrade your sunglass game now. Check out oakley.com to get yourself a pair today. I've got a pair of frog skins on the way. I took a look at their website, and those were my personal favorites. Uh, And I think I'm going to be looking pretty snazzy in them, if I do say so myself. Uh, Because they also have this really cool prism lens technology. And you might be asking yourself, what the hell is that? They say that in the copy. I'm allowed to swear. Uh, I'm allowed to say whatever I want. It's a proprietary technology to Oakley. And available for everyday settings as well. If you want to know more, and I know you do, you just head on over to oakley.com and go ahead and do your own research on prism lens technology. Again, it says that too. And while you're there, get yourself a pair of everyday glasses that'll be sure to change your look for the better. When you wear Oakley, there really is more than meets the eye. Don't trust me. Try it for yourself. I've worn a lot of different sunglasses brands in my life, and I can assure you that Oakley is not only the best looking, but the best quality out there. So head on over to oakley.com for more information today. Okay, big thanks to Oakley. Super excited to have him on the podcast. Also super excited to have Sot here on the podcast. Jacob, uh, congratulations on, the the, the phase isn't over. We got one more week left, but I think everyone, I'm sure you guys included, had this Kings matchup kind of circled on the schedule as the the big one to get over the hump if you guys are going to remain undefeated. Um, Mm -hmm. Before we talk about that set in particular, just talk to me about, how this team kind of came together and why you think you guys have meshed so well. Was it easy from day one or were there particular things that you really needed to work on? Yeah, sure. Um, so first, yeah, we did, we were kind of anticipating the Kings matchup, like for a while I was like, um, we kind of thought that was, that would be like our, like, like a big rematch kind of thing. Um, we played them at the masters or sorry, at the, um, the kickoff land. And we kind of thought like, That'd probably be like the, the hardest team to beat in the phase. So we were excited for that. Um, and luckily it went our way. It was a very, very close game. Probably like one of the closest games um, this season. And uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty fun. And as for the start of the team, so uh, let me think. So beginning of, of the season, I think uh, the Titans were going with, um, with Baskin. And so uh, yeah, I was left without a team. And so I was like, um, I'm just gonna go mid. Because I was thinking to myself, like, the two mid laners I'd really want to play with would be um, Pagon or um, Paul. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, because I, I really think I'd be, I could be a good mid laner and I want to play mid lane. And so I was like, I'm going to play mid unless I get Paul or Pagon. And I didn't get Paul, and I'm like, Pagon's probably going to quit. So I'll just, you know, I'll just play, I'll just play mid. Um, and I was trying to, like, you know, gather some, gather the squad. I was talking to Netroid um, a bit, talked to a few other people. Uh, but your yeah, things were looking too great. It was kind of like, 
it was either going to be like I, I i go through play-ins or i get stuck in sec or i get maybe on like a lower end team um because you know it was pretty hard to get like on a, on a top tier team as mm -hmm. you know someone who's first year in mid lane you know you gotta kind of prove yourself so i was fine with actually playing sec i would i, would, I was you know fine with doing that um and i was gonna hit up like maybe like auto speed or something um you know, or I maybe didn't hear like, about that. Can you imagine the the noise around the community that that, that, that team would have gotten? You playing yeah. mid auto speed jungle, that would have been a meme machine instantly. Oh been, wait, it never mind. It wasn't funny. your team; it was a different team. Sorry. Yeah, been, yeah, and <laughs> yeah, we, we actually we tried to auto speed on the Titans because um, Lairs was going to quit, and then yeah, we're like we need a jungle. It. We tried to auto speed. He did pretty well. He he would actually go off. Um, okay, wait. But yeah, did he play Hades jungle? I think he did, yeah, he did. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that was the rumor going around. I was like, there's no yeah. way this guy played Hades Jungle yeah, in a try. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hades Jungle, yeah. And he did, he did all right. Uh, we tried a few junglers, and he did, he performed the best. So we were like, all right, are we down for auto speed? Or like, everyone's like, yeah, we'll get auto speed. And then as we were like, you know, we were like, oh, going to the door, it's like, we're about to open the door to, you know, bring auto speed in. Layers, layers is like, oh, wait, guys, actually, I'll keep playing. And then we're like, okay, that's, yeah, that's good, because we want to keep our, you know, our jungler. And so we kept playing. And then uh, there's a few times like I think Larry's missed a few scrims, and then we had auto speed sub in. Like I remember one time auto speed subbed in. He went like nine and one versus the Kings, and then Larry's like Larry's got on, and then um, we, we lost like three games in a row to the Kings, and it was, it was, it was pretty funny. But I mean, pe people I think people were actually sacking versus us, like to like purposely make auto speed look better. I don't know. That's, that's what I heard, but I mean. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, <laughs> that is that, kind that, of the the best strat, right? Like they're trying yeah, like, a player you don't think is as good, and you're like, "Oh, I'll make this guy look real good this game." Yeah, yeah, but like, I mean, it's like it's kind of funny though. Like, you know, you have to like you have to int just to like I don't know. Like you're, you're that scared of him that you have to like you have to int to you know make sure he doesn't get in. You know what I mean? Or like it's true. you know make sure he makes sure, you know I don't know. It's, it's I feel like it's funny. better for you like in solo lane. Like I feel like you could single-handedly decide if someone makes a team in a scrim block in solo lane like if you just yeah, int true, the lane true. you know yeah, what i he mean just, he's grief mm -hmm. yeah he just, because jungle like, like they have to be around other people other people will see oh that yeah. guy's playing poorly they yeah. might not notice well sometimes yeah. i hear i hear how your scrims go sometimes sot so maybe <laughs> they might think yeah. oh maybe sot is sprinting it a little bit but like <laughs> yeah. a soul yeah, any soul laner could be like i don't know bro he was just he played the lane perfectly yeah, yeah. He's just to get the feet. And then yeah, you just like, farm him in the SVL over and over and over again. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, got well, him. Jungler's, the jungler's here again. And he's like, wow, wait, he's already in mid? Wow, he moves fast. <laughs> yeah. He must have blanked but, uh, and ulted. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a major distance. But um, yeah, um, so I was like, I was kind of playing my option. I'm like, it's not looking too good. But I was, you know, I was prepared to grind for another few years. Because like, mid, mid lane, me playing mid lane is like a long term goal. So I was like fine with, you know, the short term getting owned. And then a long term, you know, maybe like, season maybe season 11 or something season 12 i'll like it would be pretty good but then uh my savior netroid or actually no, my savior jake got kicked right or, or whatever like or you know he uh you, you guys got hurry right i was like all right i'm saved we have a support because the support options are not looking good so i'm like i have maybe roid and jake like roid was like yeah jake could be pretty good and then my my savior times two panic tom you know leviathans are like all right we'll get that thing and i'm like oh my god like mm -hmm. that's where he's talking to penny tom and he's like i got penny tom and i'm like holy cow this, this could be great this could be great and penny tom was like they're down for me to play mid but they probably weren't like excited but they're like all right like this is probably gonna be fine mm -hmm. and then our problem is we have a good solaner because um the main solaners were like already on like the, like the main team so our only options were like to play in solaners which like th there's some decent solaners like aqua's really good you know scaredy is fine like, you know those players are pretty good but it's like it's not like a top tier solaner you know like mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um that was like world's winning like level. So, um, then Pagon, Pagon was like, "All right, um, I'll, I'll play for another year." And then we're like, "All right, we should definitely get Pagon." And then I'm like, "I think I think I told Netroid, I was like, I'm fine. You guys getting Pagon? Like, I'll just go. You know, I'll just like, I'll just go. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll like go play SEC or something. You guys can have him. And like, you guys can fight against Elena and all that. Mm -hmm. And then um, Netroid's like, please, dude. Like, he was like, she was like, please, uh, play solo lane, and uh, we win worlds this year for solo lane, and then next year you can play mid. We'll win worlds for you in mid next year. <laughs> and I'm like, like, and then like after like 30 minutes, I'm like, all right, screw it. You know, like I'll, I'll do it because it was my op my other options were looking too great. So I was like, okay, and I'm good friends with like Pagon and Jake, so mm -hmm. I thought like living with them and ha like playing with them for a whole year would be like pretty fun. So I was down. Um, and then here we are. And then um, our first scrim, we played Dragons, and we got like owned. We lost like all four games, 
And I was thinking like, oh, well, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure it'll be like a tough year. You know, we're probably going to, you know, maybe, you know, we're, we're going to like grind a bit, you know? Sure. Um, you know, I, I think we're, we're all thinking like, oh, like we're, we're, we're going to be good, but like maybe top three by the end of the phase, but like we have to like work really hard and the, the start is going to be rough, but we have time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think after that, we started winning a bunch of scrims and we, we were doing pretty well. Um, like we're, we we have like an inside joke. Like every team we beat, we're like, oh, we're we're now like we're now seventh seed. So we beat like, like um like one team and be like, all right, guys, we're sixth seed. All right, now we're seventh. <laughs> we're we're, five, we're seed, fourth seed. You know, third seed. We kept, kept going to seeds. And then once we beat like every team, like, at least like 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 we went even in scrims or beat them. We're like, all right, guys, let's go. You know, we're um we're <laughs> we're first seed now, guys. Good job. And then <laughs> like yeah, we, we we but we didn't think we'd be like crazy or anything. We're kind of like you know maybe people are just like you know uh learning the meta and stuff and we're just kind of uh you know getting a bit lucky or whatever um and then the kickoff tournament happened we played pretty well and i still kind of feel like we're just getting lucky or something i don't know because uh you know we'd be stealing objectives and stuff it's like we're just we're getting kind of, we're getting kind of lucky here so i don't know bro yeah. it, i'm still looking for a team that's securing their objectives like it's not yeah, like true. you know it's, it's right. every fire giant's 50 50 right now like yeah. every, every like every single team is just 50 50 fires you know, yeah, there are characters meta. that are better at securing. Like, you don't have to play Merlin every game, right? Like, you <laughs> could. I'm just Except saying, like, now. you could play a little Ra, a little, yeah, a little Eset, a little <laughs> Poseidon, Scylla. though that one's cursed, like Scylla. Yeah, I don't yeah. think Poseidon is a good security <clears throat> mage. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, he's a good also, give up the objective mage. Yeah, when we were scrimming... Uh, Warriors were like by far the best team in scrims, like by far. So I, I think I, I have heard that from think... almost every player I've talked to. Yeah, we didn't beat you guys in scrims until after kickoff. Like you guys would 4-0 us like every single time. And like other teams we would go even with or win scrims against. And then you we'd scrim you guys and we're just like, all right, time to get cooked today. Like Jake's <laughs> going to be invading all my purples. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but yeah, sorry, you can continue. So sorry. I don't talk it. I'm pretty much done. But yeah, I mean, this is what happened. We were like foroing every team. Like maybe we drop like one game, and like I was feeding as well. Like we were still winning even though I was feeding. <laughs> like I, I would play like Anubis, and like I, I, would, I would just like get farmed. I was like I'm playing. I, I was actually like disappointed in my play because I'm like playing my team down, but we still kept winning. So uh, you know, I'll, I'll take it. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, you guys have been popping. I, there's there's no doubt. Yeah. Sorry, Barry. Go ahead. It's I think he played the Anubis against us, and then Haddix was like, <laughs> I kind of want to play Anubis solo, and now we're oh, like, bro, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, no. He, uh, you know, he did it, he went the, uh, the business skin, like the money skin. Yeah. And it, yeah, I think he was kind of feeding <laughs> it was, I remember that, yeah. He would go like the whole, it was like the Doomor brought to Hootie, Magus, yeah. like that whole build was tech, and it was just, yeah. that was a, that was a time was funny. back then. That was funny. Yeah, I, I don't know, I, I have to ask Sotten, I hope, uh, I'm I'm very interested in what you end up doing if you do s swap to mid. Uh, but I, I I'm I've always been curious why that is such a big driver for you because you've been nothing but very successful since joining the league in solo. I don't think there's ever been a time where you were considered in the bottom half of the league uh, in as far as individual solo play goes <clears throat> over a, over a longer stretch of time. And if you continue on this trajectory that you're on in solo lane, I think that you're absolutely have you, ha you have the potential to be talked about in that same vein as the best, you know, iconic solo laners of all time. But you seem so much more interested in switching to mid. And, and I'm just curious as to why. Um, I guess maybe, I don't know. Um, I think maybe if I go to mid, I can maybe like play, like I, I can, I don't know. Uh, do better, I guess, overall, because in Solan, I'm kind of like hot or cold sometimes, or like, like certain stretches, like stretches of the year, I'm not like crazy good. Like, you know, Final K, for example, or Benji have been like top, top of their role for like a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I'm usually like in the middle or like sometimes at the top and I go down to the middle. And so, but I feel like in mid, I could be like in the middle at first. And after like a year or so, I think I could be like near the top, like top two, maybe top three sometimes. Uh, for like majority of the time, and I, I, but I, I feel like in mid I can actually like you know make some crazy plays and like uh, you know like go off like Paul Paul level type things. Um, sure. And, but but suddenly I feel like I just I I, I you know I, I struggle a bit in that regard. Like I don't know I, I I've always been like the highlight player like the guy trying to make you know crazy plays or something and, and instead of just doing my job and like being consistent you know like sure. I don't care like does his job you know he, he front lines you know and then his team cleans up and they, they do well but like 
me it's like i need like the stupid spotlight or i need like you know to like mm -hmm. feel like i don't know validated by making a crazy play or something mm -hmm. um and i feel like i'm also just really good at like mages hunters and assassins compared to like warriors i think if you can't compare someone like hydex or like i don't know variety or something um compare like their like like i, I think they play like a uh, a good like concentrated amount of like tanks like they're really good at guardians and warriors like cthulhu and stuff mm -hmm. um i think like the, like them on those gods is like a lot better than me on those gods but like i think i'm good at a, a big a large range of gods so, like um say i don't know if ulu is meta for example or like if thor is meta or something like that or you know if uh, like damage dealers are like good in soul lane i feel like i'll do a lot better than everyone else because i mean people don't really play those gods that much you know they sure like you see you see like you know soul laners in rank they mainly playing just you know warriors right and scrims but I think I'm like naturally better at those at those roles, so sure. uh, that's, that's kind of that's kind of why I think like I could do better in mid because mid is kind of like zone lane, except you know you're you're playing different types, you know like you're one v one in uh, your opponent a lot and you can actually kill them and you can make plays and stuff. So I feel like that's kind of why I would uh, do better in mid. Sure, but, fair enough. No, I, I I hope my question didn't come off as like uh, hating or like doubting or yeah, anything no, like no, that. No, no, no. Um, I actually, I appreciate it a lot. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate the kind words because. Uh, I mean, maybe I just don't have the confidence in myself in so lane. Maybe I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. um, like, I'm not sure if it's possible for me to be like, like considered like the goat in the role. No. No, but I think I that know. what you were saying makes sense to me. Like my personal solo lane goat is Benji. I think that yep. he's the best solo laner to ever play. And to your point, yep. that dude was happy to show up, zone three people do no damage in a team fight if that was what was required and win the game for his team and he would mm -hmm. never go for yeah. a crazy play unless like it was he was gonna lose otherwise like that was the only time that he would really let the let the cat out of the bag and that oh, yeah. I, I do think that like consistency is a big part of what makes a solo laner great whereas a backliner can afford to be more inconsistent with higher peaks in lower yeah. valleys than a frontliner can um, and if you yeah. think that that's your play style and I think that your assessment of, you know, your standing, uh, I would, <coughs> excuse me, my throat is like messed up from allergies. Uh, I would definitely I agree. agree with that. And, and when you put it about, when you think about it in that context, uh, I agree that a backline role fits the way that you've historically played the game pretty well. Um, yeah. Like, I feel like, you know, put me on like Hebo or Janus or Scylla or something and like, I'll hit the abilities and like, I'll use my actives right, I'll position right. But you put me on like I don't know, like Cthulhu. I'm probably gonna go too far. You know, I'm probably I'm probably gonna you know. I mean, Cthulhu is pretty easy, but you know, mm -hmm. like I feel like on a mage, I can like uh, like if someone like a jungler tries to go on me, I'll just one shot them, make you know, make a play. But it's like yeah, in so lane, I might you know try and go for like the crazy play, but it's like you know, I'll end up just dying or like something bad will happen. Um, yeah, like, like you said, there's you know higher peaks in mid, so you can afford to be inconsistent. Sure. But also, the meta soul winners right now are pretty boring, I think, with Vamana yeah. and Guan and Herc. I mean, Herc's, you can do some flashy plays. Bro, but... if you don't think Herc's fun, Bro. you don't think Warriors are fun. I'm no, sorry. I love that, guy, that guy is I love fun. Herc. I love her. Yeah, I just it's it's maybe so boring was... to play versus bro. I hate playing versus him. Yeah, yeah playing God. versus him, I, I can agree that that is, yeah. that just, can lead yeah. to some uninteresting play yeah. patterns. But playing as I hope. Herc is so much fun, yeah. I hope regrowth gets nerfed, man. I'm so tired of 30% movement speed race cars running around everywhere. <laughs> it got, yeah. it got a little so nerf tired. in the patch, you know? Get, get a little nerf, yeah. And then getting soloed by Vamanas, that's great. <laughs> getting insta-stunned by Guans, that's also fun. Like, yeah, it's just... Wait, yeah. wait uh, a minute. Barra, you, a backliner, don't like warriors? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> no, I, I like that... playing against, like, King Arthur for some reason. But I don't like... <laughs> Someone, dude, this is where we need a production staff to just, I, I need a, I need a King Arthur, var, Variety King oh. Arthur at speed buff button where I can just slam it and that clip just plays. Like, it cuts our <laughs> audio, I'm just like, oh yeah, bam, and we have to watch the whole thing so, so we can all laugh about it. Yeah. I'm just saying, bro, if you played against I Arthur for two you. months, if you played against Arthur for two months, you wouldn't be saying, I like playing against Arthur, you know, in, in that, and. That's just the cycle yeah, of wrong. MOBAs. It's you're just that's true. That's the thing true. you haven't played point. against in a while is more fun to play against, and then you play it against it for a yeah. bit, and you're like, ah. Oh. Remember when Vimana was meta? For... Like, that's how it goes. That's true. I was pretty that's excited for Janice and Sir Kev to come back, and uh, now I'm not <laughs> excited that they true. did come back. Uh -huh. yeah, I, was like, I was like, they're super underplayed. No one plays them. Yeah. Like, this is going to be great. 
and then now I'm like, oh, I've got one shot by Sir Cat for the. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> Which button do I beat? Which button do I yeah. Aegis? Oh, I'm yeah. dead. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. That's the fun part, it Barris. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> any pot, any combination wouldn't have mattered. Um, I'm surprised you haven't seen the Giannis solo from Isat. That's uh, that's uh, uh, an iconic solo lane pick for. Yep. For some damage desiring uh, solo laners, but maybe True. maybe you're cooking it up. You know, I'm, wait, who do you guys did, play this weekend? I did pull it out. We played the Glads and the and the Dragons. So uh, this, okay. this upcoming weekend. Yeah, this upcoming weekend. Yeah. Oh then, yeah, you're cooking for sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this dude, guy's in uh, the kitchen. I'm not. I'm trying hard, dude. I'm picking like a Fulu or something, or like Guan Yu. You know, I'm just gonna, oh, I'm, picking Herc, you know, I'm picking something OP because like <laughs> if, if we win both our sets, we get 13 or no. I think we break the the win record. So, mm -hmm. um, I gotta be trying hard. You know, I can't. I can't cook. I'm, I'm too, scared, too scared to cook. But at but, some um, point, you're gonna be you're gonna be, Joan. You're gonna be itching too much. For the mm -hmm. for, to cook, you know what I mean. You like, gotta scratch the itch. True. The, 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 itch. the pressure is gonna build in the because the, they're not letting you into the kitchen. You know what I mean. Yeah, like yeah. that I might mean that. Like yeah. I'm just saying, game one, maybe game two. You win game one against the Glads. Maybe you're thinking like, <laughs> true. we yeah. got you gotta release the pressure a little bit so you don't you don't decide that you need to run it down at Masters. Like you gotta you gotta let some out. That's a good point because like our next game after that would be Masters, so it's like then I can't cook for Master. Like it's it's gonna be right. hard, you know. Like yeah. I gotta cook at some point. Like so, you're yeah. looking at a long break. After, you're looking at the you know? summer before you're yeah, able to yeah. cook. Like but, that's I mean, not that, that'd be go. some that'd be some crazy growth though if I if I don't just don't cook. Just, that's just, true. You know, just keep my head down and just you know <laughs> pick the OP gods. Just don't cook, you know. And just uh, you know get the job done, you know. Maybe maybe that's some uh, some growth right there. There's some joke there's... here about Smite players and ordering all their food and then but now being told not cooking is better you know yeah. like some there, there's something there's some line there that that's like, funny that's funny that's a good one that's a good one normally you're supposed to want to cook but in this case keep on keep on ordering your food you know what i mean that is true that is true yeah like, thing. And for, for like uh 10.3 like you could cook like a lot like you could play like mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff like it was actually so much fun that's like probably my favorite time of smite like ever was like when like season of hope dropped mm -hmm. i i really really enjoyed it um and mm -hmm. it was a ton of fun Ex but it, it made like picking like you know like damage dealers like hard because like Herc and uh Vimana were really good mm -hmm. so and like unless they're banned out like if they picked them it was like really hard um so like maybe now like since they're nerfed maybe like I i'm gonna try to cook a bit more in scrims and see what's good like if you have like any damage dealers is good like i played Chernobog today like you know i think um you know there could be some uh some more like wait damage are, we double are you double blocking tomorrow uh yeah we are Oh no, no, we're just your second block. Oh no, <laughs> GG. Uh, <laughs> GG. No. Oh yeah, boy. Better be, be zoomed up on coffee. You know, <laughs> <laughs> second yeah. block warrior scrims are going to be a fiesta. Yeah. yeah. Gonna, gonna be fun. That's going to that's going to be a little rough for sure. Yeah. Um Yeah. I was going to say I do think that w you said that like at the beginning of 10.3 you felt like you could cook a lot. W yeah. What was it just that everyone realized that Vamana, Herc, Guan were so much better than everything else you could be doing that it isn't worth uh, doing those other things? Like, what do you think um, brought you back from uh, from that like really wide open feeling that you had at the beginning of Season of Hope? Yeah, I think yeah, I think it was probably um, people realizing how like how strong like, Herc, Herc, and Vamana and, and Guan and Horus are and stuff. I, mean, I think Horus is fine. But um, or like obviously like now he he needed a nurse. So I, I think mm -hmm. he's fine now. But he wasn't like crazy OP before. Um, or like not oppressive OP. But um, yeah, I think it was probably that people just figuring out like oh this god's like super OP because like at the start like when the first patch first came out, um, people were not like spam picking them, but they were definitely picking them every now and then. Like I remember seeing Vama, uh, Ducky play Vamana, like I think in like some I think kickoff or something, and I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, I can't believe he's actually playing Vamana. Like the gods, the gods so bad. Mm -hmm. I can't believe he's actually playing the that. same thing. Really, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's really funny. Yeah, I'm like I'm like, oh, that's so weird. He's playing Vamana. Like the the buffs are really nice and like good for him, but like you know, like he's he's still a mana. And mm -hmm. then I was like, I was like so wrong, like completely wrong, because like now he's like he, he's like one v fiving, but yep. um, yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I think maybe now this recent patch, like maybe um, those gods will be better. Um, now that like the the main gods are nerfed, um, but also think like the 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 pen nerf uh, might have uh, shifted things shifted things away, mm -hmm. and also the Tehuti and Doomorb and Deso nerf because like that was like the main build for mages. It's like made them like able to like do damage in lane. 
because you come to lane with vamp shroud well you can get vamp shroud and tier one pendant um mm -hmm. and you get like a chalice which is pretty nice um and then uh your lane is good because you have like vamp shroud you have like extra power and stuff and then plus like the mages like uh bonus power like uh class stat is pretty nice mm -hmm. um um and like also the totem damage helps like all those things kind of helps mages um be good in soul lane and just because mages and hunt like assassins and hunters and stuff are just like really good in general so you can kind of pick them and do pretty well um and then yeah like this slowly like when like those like really good gods got better um and then uh like the damage drifts came down a bit then it kind of like shifted things a bit so now it's like warriors are probably better now which is like fine but um yeah, this is basically what happened, I think. Sure. But uh, I think maybe they're good now, because, like, also, like, with the crit nerfs, um, I thought, like, hunters are going to be, like, not playable in zone lane. Um, but people have been going, like, the, the chin size XE build, right. and it actually hits so hard. Like, it hits harder than crit. Like, I was going to, I was, I've been playing hunters, and I, my autos hit for, like, 450 plus, like, chin size damage, and I'm like, mm -hmm. this is, like, literally, I'm literally critting at this point. Mm -hmm. Like, it's kind of, <laughs> I'm like, I'm literally critting, but I'm full attack speed, so. Um,. Yeah, maybe I'll just play some hunters. I don't know. There but you go. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe he's been sneaking into the kitchen after all from time maybe. to time. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> all right, one last thing before we move on to talking about uh, some some patch note stuff that I wanted to ask about because now now you've got me cooking. Like it's the cooking oh, is oh, contagious. No. Um, no, I think that one thing I'm a little surprised about is that I think that the the physical healing item tree that got introduced, the scepters, like Sekhmet Scepter, yep. Vital Amplifier. I think that I was expecting those to enable some pretty uh, previously weaker picks to to be like significantly stronger. And I'm, yep. I'm personally surprised that we haven't seen more things like Vital Amplifier, Amaterasu, or... Uh, yep. Even like Vital Amplifier or Arachne goes like pretty hard, yeah, I think. It does, yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think, I mean, obviously not asking you to give anything away, but like, do you think that those are far away from being something that's like viable at a high level, kind of close? Like, what do you think is, uh, what's your read on the that scepter tree in general? Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty close, but um, I don't know. For some reason, every time I go Vital Amplifier and every time I see it, it just doesn't do enough damage or i don't know it just like it just doesn't feel like the stats are really good like it's like 50 or 55 percent attack speed and then like mm -hmm. pretty good power like 15 percent extra damage in your autos mm -hmm. but like i played like i played a ton, i played like five omni games or something with fight on the fire and i'm like every time i'm just like doing no damage and i'm not clearing the wave as fast mm -hmm. um it's like i want to go um it's called golden blade because it's, just, it's a solid item as well like movement speed and power attack speed and the passive right and it's kind of hard to go both so usually I go Golden Blade because I think it's cheaper and it just helps you clear lane better. Right. Um, so then I can't really go Vital Amplifier. Um, but when I do, it's like, it, it just feels like I'm like losing trades. Like, I, I'll, I'll get it. I'm like, okay, I should be able to beat them like in an like, auto trade because I have Ama with, you know, Vital Amplifier. And they're like, you know, some random warrior with one defense item. So I should be able to win this. But every time every time I do, like, it doesn't feel that good. I'm not sure why. Um, hmm. Yeah, fair and, enough. Yeah, and for like the, the, the Scepter, um... So I'm I'm a bit confused on how it works. So uh, if you heal, right, mm -hmm. you use an ability, like a damaging ability, yep. and you get half half a second off all your cooldowns, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So like I thought the description meant like you uh, like every auto attack or like every time you damage someone you get it back. So like let's say you like Kali jump on someone, you get the heal, and then you start auto attacking, you know, throwing your two out, and then you get cooldowns back. But yes. It seems like that's not the case. So no, it does work that way. You just can't. <clears throat> you could only just get a, a refund every so often. So like a way to think uh, about it is you proc it and you've got the buff active and imagine that there's a second buff that it's like on your next hit, take cooldown off and you okay. hit someone that buff goes away for 0.5 seconds or one second or however long the ICD is. Yeah. And then that buff comes back as long. Okay. It, so like during that window, you just, every time you hit with it, it as long as they're spaced out, uh, for that amount of time and the reason we have to do things like that is because uh otherwise like take set sandstorm for example yeah he would get all true. his cooldowns back like instantly um, yeah that's what i was thinking yeah i was like people were asking me about it i'm like are you gonna put that on set i'm like does it work like that if you like imagine you, you set sandstorm on someone you all and you just like just like clawing at them and you yeah you just like back. skewer 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 crazy. like it would be sick yeah. uh but it would be really really busted um, yeah yeah gotcha. so we have to go with like 
I really do wish there was a way. There are so many uh, really wordy ability descriptions or item descriptions that would be so much easier if we could just like put it in terms that only high level players would understand but we have to be able to make it readable for someone who like what if this yeah. is the first time they are reading this is their first <laughs> item passive that they're reading yeah. when they came to smite yeah. and yeah. on god if the first item description that someone reads is bancroft's claw that's on me like i'm sorry that's that's my bad uh I was so mad when I realized, like, here's a little behind the scenes story about Bancroft's Claw. We were testing it. It was good. Everyone was doing it honestly. It was, everything was fine. And then one day, I don't remember exactly who it was. It might've been Caps Lock, one of our Q, a longtime QA guys, absolute goat. Yeah. He was like, or whoever it was, if it was him, was like, couldn't I just build this and then pure tank on RDO and like do a million damage and what, and sustain and be really huh. tanky and i was like yeah oh yeah you could, <laughs> you could. how do i stop <laughs> that from oh, happening no. so yeah. then we have to go with this whole like per 100 magic power you have that the proc increases because that's the only guaranteed way that with with limited time left because i was a little bit later in its cycle that yeah. we can guarantee that full tank rdo can't just or you know full tank whoever yeah can't just abuse the passive um yeah and it makes the, it takes the ability description from like two lines to like six lines and makes it <laughs> so much more confusing yeah but it's a necessary evil you know what, see. yeah yeah what can you yeah. do yeah when that item first came out i was like i was so confused on how it worked i just had to use it to understand and yeah I it's because it. it's really simple i think once you once you it is yeah. like yeah. understand it it's just very intimidating from the text uh yeah and it's just like get do damage and heal or get a shield based yeah. on the amount of people around you uh and that proc gets stronger based on the magic power you have mm -hmm. but because we yeah. have to be very specific which is you know part of the game uh it needs to get a lot uglier than that um so unlucky uh okay let's talk a little bit about patch notes but before we do in case anyone is just joining we have a brand new sponsor for the podcast and it is oakley we're super excited to partner with them you get to express your style and build a look that's made for you barra talk to me about how important it is to have a good pair of sunglasses well as a poor kid growing up uh, i never had a good pair of sunglasses mm. uh my most expensive pair was probably three dollars so oh. We're getting some Oakleys oh. in the mail, and I'm very excited to have actual sunglasses for the first time in my life. <laughs> if you've never... <clears throat> okay, this sounds like part of the ad, and I guess technically it is. If you've never worn a really good pair, a very high-quality pair of sunglasses, you will be legitimately amazed at the difference it makes uh, whenever, oh, whenever yeah. you try them on. My only sunglasses ever were on, like, the the rack as you left the store mm -hmm. and it was like three dollars and under yep <laughs> so yeah. i i have no experience with like top of the line sunglasses at all you are gonna have a good day when those oakley's get in nice. my phone let me tell you because they're okay, changing sorry. the game uh and it's, it's OP. They, are, they are really op for sure it's time to discover a whole new world of possibilities a lot of people in chat have been saying that they've had oakley's and that they loved them someone said mm -hmm. that they, let me hold on, let me scroll up this is not part of the the written down ad but this was uh i thought it was good where oh my goodness people are chatting today uh yeah, so, so yeah kathara it. said my oakley's just broke after like 15 years yeah 15 years of uh, the, the most impressive part of that is you didn't lose them in 15 years i lose sunglasses <laughs> all the time uh and so i'm i'm gonna be keeping my oakley's in a vault because otherwise i'm gonna lose them uh look if you run golf train if you just want to look like one of your favorite athletes, like uh, Lamar Jackson, Debo Samuel, or Mbappe, then you need to get yourself a pair of Oakleys today. They are suited for everyday eyewear with frames and lenses allowing for an extension of self, an expression of your personality, and there's much more than meets the eye. Here on this show, we're all about look good, play good, and that's why Oakley is the perfect partner for us. Even though we don't always look good, and by we I mean me, Barra does always yeah, play me. good. Oh, um, yeah. So that's, uh, that's, so that's why it's perfect for us. Uh, listen, we we will not be leaving our house without our in the morning without our Oakleys. It just it just won't be happening. Um, oh, oh, and you got to listen up because it's officially almost summer, which means you need to upgrade your sunglass game now. Check out Oakley.com to get yourself a pair today. I'm getting some frog skin prism sapphire polarized lenses. 
And if you don't know what prison lens technology wow. is, oh my god, all you got to do is go over to <laughs> oakley.com uh, and check it out. It's a proprietary technology to Oakley and available for everyday settings as well. Want to know more? I know you do. Uh, all you got to do is head on over to oakley.com and do your own research on that. I did read their article on it and it seemed very, very cool and I'm very excited to try it out. Uh, I'm, it looks awesome. And while you're there, you get yourself a pair of everyday glasses that'll be sure to change your look for the better. When you wear Oakley, there really is more than meets the eye. Don't trust me. Try it for yourself. I've worn a lot of trust sunglass family. brands in my life. Yep. Trust, uh, trust everyone that, uh, that's had a pair of Oakley's and loves them. Uh, and I can assure you. They are not, Oakley is not only the best looking, but the best quality out there. So head on over to oakley.com for more information today. Uh, all right, let's talk a little bit about patch 9.5. Um, not a huge patch in terms of a ton of big game changers because, uh, can you believe it, fellas? It's almost time for a new season again. Woo-hoo. Oh my God, it's Hamlet. I didn't even look, I was looking at the ad. I didn't look at my, my, at my Discord call. It's only your trust, Hammy. Oh, trust Hammy! Go to Oakley. Oh, okay, Barry, you have to put the Oakleys on Hamlet whenever you get them. You have to. <laughs> that'll be my picture for the day. <laughs> yes, that'll be a great picture for sure. That's that's gonna be awesome. Um, yeah, already almost time for a new season. So the patch right before a brand new season gonna be a little bit lighter because a lot of our resources are dedicated towards making that new season uh, as cool as it can be. But still some pretty impactful changes, uh, I think, overall. Um, And we've got two, kind of a coincidence, uh, or great scheduling by me, up to you to decide, that we've got (laughs) uh, the two gods that received the most changes. Um, Both both Bera and and Sot are known for each of those respective gods. So Bera, we'll start with you on Hachiman. Uh, Oh my god. Hachi getting a new passive component. Oh Uh, no. Now getting attack speed per stack on the passive, as well as a couple other small buffs. Uh, how important, how big do you think this is for Hachi? I think this is a pretty juicer change for him. Uh, it makes his one feel like an actual ability. I mean, I'm not going to give anything away. I sure. did play Hachi today in scrims, and that one does hit pretty hard. Yeah. Um, and then the passive change is really good as well. Um I feel like the MP5 was kind of wasted most of the time, um, unless you were like really spamming your buttons in lane. So it's nice that it's a little lower and you get a trade off of attack speed now. And the attack speed does feel very good. Mm-hmm. Um, that he he just felt really good today. Obviously, still the ult's gonna do absolutely zero damage with prophetic in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but outside of that, he felt pretty good. All right, that's uh, that's good to hear at the very least. And then Sod, I think the change that everyone talked about the most uh was tier now getting different ultimate effects based on the stance that he's in uh yep. what do you think this does for tier do you think this shoots him up the uh the viability list um yeah i mean it, yeah i think so it's always hard to like like you know uh make a prediction on based off like based off like the patch notes like right you can have to play them but um i think for sure yeah i mean uh if you ult like over a wall um, in guard, like you guard stance, your teammates, your teammates are fighting, you just ult over a wall. It's really hard to beat it. Like mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. a few people pre beaded it, like you know, in my rank games and stuff. But like, oh, like for the most part, it's really hard to like to pre beads. Um, and like, it definitely will get you more kills for sure. I, I think it'll be really good. But will it make him like OP? I mean, I'm not really sure. Um, I think if I would still be good. But I mean, he's his, his late game still isn't great because mm-hmm. you know, like just the way he's more of an early game god, mid game god, but. I, mean, I, th- I think I think he'll be good for sure, but um, not like OP. You know, I'm not really sure what to see. But I will say, Barry said he didn't want to give it away. I'll give it away, dude. Hachi, dude, what the heck? <laughs> I, I, I think, dude, I think like, one shot by he presses one, and he's like, he's just, like, he just like shoots all the all the, all the like arrows at me. I can't run from it, and like, what the heck? But um, yeah. everyone kept telling us, dude. The one isn't doing anything. Make it do more damage. Make it do more damage. And yeah. I was sitting there like, you. it does a lot of damage already. It did like, what, 110% scaling? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's pretty good. But uh, uh, yeah, The I mean, people demanded it. What do, you, what do you want me to do? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's cool because I think he, he, he needed it. And like, Hachi is one of those gods who's not like frustrating at all to play versus, but he feels like pretty nice to play, at least mm-hmm. in my opinion. Like, I, I, I never go versus Hachi. I'm like, oh my God, he's he's... he's He's shooting me or like he's ulting me or something, you know, like right. I don't care too much. 
whereas like maybe some other god you know other gods might be like really annoying to play versus like i don't know like amc or something but mm -hmm. um he's not a I, suffocating I, character yeah. yeah yeah he's like yeah you have to like like his one is hard to land like kind of um mm -hmm. and it's like point blank but i mean so i, I think like changes are good like, I, i'm excited to see him get played more like I, I'm, I'm not sure if he's gonna be like op also like i think he'll be good but like i'm not sure if he's gonna be like broken broken but i mean we'll have to see but sure um yeah, it, I mean, with both of them, it's hard to see. It is funny that, because I agree that I don't perceive Hachiman as a frustrating character to play against, but I feel, yeah. in, you know, he, like you said, he isn't necessarily super suffocating, but when you really think about it, like, he kind of is, right? When w I feel like when Hachiman has a lead, are there other hunters that are as good at pushing that lead as Hachi? Like, probably not that many, because he just gets to engage on you from the full lane away, right? Like, if... Let's say you're, yeah. you know, you're playing any hunter, you're playing Ishtar up against Hachiman and he's up two levels on you. He just, it, like, he just hops on the horse and starts running you down. You don't have a ton of options to, to get away from him unless you're like positioned close enough to the jungle. But I don't know. It's like, uh, it's just interesting because I, I feel the exact same way, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's much more frustrating to get Uller Axe comboed or, like, on her aim pilled into a wall and just be like, oh, okay, I'm dead. Right. Yeah. Like, Hachi yeah. horse down the lane. You're like, okay, that's fair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's <laughs> I mean, fine. Yeah. Right Respectable. Lane, yeah. yeah. And, like, none of his abilities will, like, one-shot you, so you have to, like, you know, yeah. you, have to, like, you have, like, two, three, like, three is hard to hit. Right. You know, it's, mm -hmm. like, it's like, avoidable. But, like, Uller is, like, you just throw an axe and then you're just not, you're dead. Right. Yeah, it's like, do I want to yeah. beat this? No. Okay, I did. Yeah. Oh, guess yeah. I died. Yeah. 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 yeah, I will say as well. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. I was gonna say real quick, his abilities aren't like, like, you don't get like CC'd or knocked around or like mm -hmm. hit by like in a, a frustrating way. Just like they just mm -hmm. do some good damage. So, yeah, 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 definitely agreed. I will say, uh, in play tests, clumsy like legitimately three shot me with uh, with a Hachi one the <laughs> other day, and I was like, oh my god, like what just <laughs> happened to me? What like, have I, what, what have I done? Oh uh, yeah, I was like, oh my god, oh, I cannot no. believe I just got slammed that hard. It literally like I just couldn't believe it. But I was inting that whole game, which has kind of been. I've been on an int streak recently in play tests. So. Same. Uh, sometimes that's just how that's just how it goes you know like nothing you can do about yeah, that um sure. okay a couple other solo lane changes that i wanted to get your thoughts on here sot uh sure. yorm um loses loses a second on his two cooldown and then on his ao3 uh he's just been losing his movement speed when revealed from stealth now he yeah. retains that movement speed um mm -hmm. i i think this is pretty big for for the snake do you do you agree um yeah so i actually i didn't know that was a bug so um i saw that and i was kind of confused because um uh can you can you walk me through this change so fixed issue where your would lose the movement speed yeah so, so if you got hit itself. so if you were in the three and you got hit by something right yeah it reveals you but you stay under yeah. the ground yeah. you w defaulted back to your yeah. regular movement speed yeah so that was a bug y yeah tech so like this was one thing that like we were just talking about it and we were like okay yeah. well he based on the ability description he keeps his movement speed right and then we were all like wait a minute no he definitely loses his movement speed when he gets hit and we were like oh you that's not it. how that's not how the text really reads yeah i didn't know it was yeah. a bug either that's couldn't we just like intended. is that an easy yeah. fix and it turned out that it was um so yeah. you know it's like partial you could call it a bug you could call it a unintent you know a mis yeah. mis uh explained ability from day one but uh mm -hmm. making it truer to that um you know ni nice and easy gotcha. In that yeah way. gotcha okay yeah i think yeah i mean uh with gods it's kind of uh like when you when you change a god like a lot of the course of like a year or like a few months or something like it's like a, it's kind of it's like a ticking time bomb of when they're gonna be good yeah um like with hercules for example he was like pretty bad and then got like a lot of buffs over the course of like a few months and then other minute changes like the um the breast favor growth being pretty good and a few other things you know definitely made him like really really strong um so i mean we'll have to see but i think when you buff like when you buff gods a lot over the course of like a certain amount of time and there's there's still not gonna be there like they're still not that good or like maybe they've never been like super op because I, I mean there's been times where you're like you know kind of like a meta pick but mm -hmm. like not like oh my god like this god is so op um like we, like, mm -hmm. we have to ban him um so i mean i don't know i think yorm is a pretty cool kit and i think his three is like super op um 
So like what I do is I max a three second. So mm. I'll do like one of the two and then I'll max a three. Um, so I think if, if you don't max a three, this buff helps him a lot because it's, you know, 14 starting. Mm -hmm. But usually like when I rotate the fights, I'll probably have like, I'll be like, you know, have uh, it maxed out anyway. So You'll be like, I think this, yeah, this will definitely help people for sure. And I think uh, it'll probably be, it'll probably be a little bit better, but I'm not sure if it'll be like super OP or, you know, like, yeah. a lot. I think Yorm's only good from my perspective if he can go the like super offensive items and one shot backliners. I've never really been a fan yeah. of like tank Yorm. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. So the yeah, thing is, like, for me, is better, I think. Yeah. 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 Like, I don't know. Every time I go damage Yorm, it never works out for me. Like, I, I end up like, I'll like stealth and then I'll like knock up and then I just get one shot before, like when I'm ulting. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I, there's been times where I'm like full damage and, or sorry, full tank and I would like stealth in, knock up, and then ult and then I just tie. Um, yeah <laughs> and like you know I, I, but so maybe the damage mode is better but like for me i've never been able to like make it work even though i go damage like i see other, other people go damage yorm and they, they go off sometimes but mm. it's like it's never worked for me yeah so like yeah that's just that's just a god i won't be playing i guess <laughs> yeah i wonder what the what the damage yorm like the high because yorm you know not having uh actual hybrid items with power anymore um yeah that's right yeah the crown makes stuff, a pretty yeah. big difference but he also gets glad shield now so like yeah yeah probably i mean like a little binding some tech. like binding glad shield could do the yeah. old like east staff east staff you could do the the old tablet splash because you're just gonna stack it instantly yeah. basically yeah. it's like all, free yeah, stacks ta yeah tablet made him feel really good um like when tablet was like really good um, yeah he was he was he was he felt pretty good for sure hmm. all right yeah we'll see we'll see if we see a little bit uh a little bit more Yorm. Um, Barry, nice little soul buff here. Smile. Oh, oh my yeah. god. Huge. Oh my god. Huge. Huge. Huge buff. Yeah. Massive, no, maybe? Off the one, baby. Yeah. yeah, that's big sustain, uh, you know? Guess she, just, that. she just doesn't have a first item. Like, nothing in that first item feels great. Yeah. And that's 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 just the mage ADC problem. You know Destiny's right spot. behind you. and Yeah. Bancroft is like right and that there. Items does feel bad. What? No. It feels no, good. Uh, you don't go telekines. No, I I haven't built telekines since they like super butchered it. Uh, I, I was a big fan before, and then it took like one or two big nerfs, and I was like, yeah, that I'm toast. If my memory Unlucky. serves, Barry, you've always been more of an ability soul player, anyways. Like, not yeah. you never really went the full auto attack build. You were uh, more like Deso or like Magus soul type builds. Yeah, I liked uh, wandering on soul most of the time, and that was before the uh, gilded, uh, or whatever. Uh, I can't remember that upgrade. Uh, what's the one off gilded? That's not ornate. The one on the side. Uh, diamond. Diamond, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, before okay. Diamond, I liked having a ring in that slot. Mm -hmm. um, but after that, uh, yeah, I was a mage boy. Mm. Um, okay, but how about this? Let's think about it this way. Before, you couldn't, be, you could only, if you want to do percent HP damage to tanks, you could only build Soul Reaver. Now you could build Cyclopean and Soul Reaver. You could yeah, be Cyclopean. double hitting them for max HP. Look, Sot's terrified already. He's hor He's I, like, I, I'm screwed. I can't I'm deal with that yeah. build. Solaner's banned in SPL, so thank God. You know, I don't care if my team... <laughs> my, my, my team says no, I, I'm going rogue. And I'm They're like, ban Herc, and you're like, oh, weird. I don't know. I typed in Herc, but Sol Sol. popped up. Yeah, like, yeah Sol with the mice click, guys. That's kind of odd. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're double, you're double hitting for max HP. How could that be bad? Every time I build Cyclopean, it's felt so bad. Unlucky. Unlucky. It's like Vital Amplifier. I feel like it should be good. And then I build it and I'm like, oh, that does not feel good. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely. Yeah. You have no idea how many items uh, we've like play tested. And I'm like, this is going to be so broken. And then after three mm -hmm. games, it's like, yeah, that item did nothing. Uh, and it was terrible. Yeah. Uh, like it just happens it's... all the time. It's like uh, for Psych Open, I feel like the team fights don't last long enough right now. And then if I. I feel like I, I feel like team fights build. are longer right now. Everyone, that's what everyone's saying. That like that no one's dying. Well, it just depends on the team fight. I don't sure. know what team fights they're in, but sometimes <laughs> it's uh oh, it's the one where th it's the one where their mage is the one who gets get gone on, and the yeah, ADC gets exactly, to cast. Yeah. You know, not the yeah. not the other way around. That's just that a must be nice. long standing uh, bit there. Um, Ol run yeah. buff as well. Overflowing divinity, ten base damage, big uh yeah 
huge. Uh, Oleron's probably coming back. You know, there's a lot of uh, non-CC immune ult soul laners right now that uh, oh my god, really want to play into it. I hate, I hate Oleron, dude. Oh no. Yeah, Vamana being meta just insta kills any Oleron. Yeah. Like literally, just just executes it from the start. Uh, yeah. Yep. No chance. Okay, but Vamana did get nerfed. Uh, another cool, a uh, second cooldown on his one, and then wow. some. Heft, uh, a hefty ult nerf here on the power. You know, losing 15 power at all stages of the game for a warrior is a lot. Uh, also fixed a bug with the shield and all that kind of stuff. Sot, what do you think, again, without giving too much away, like big nerf to Vamana, small nerf, medium nerf? How, how are you kind of feeling from Vamana after this? I mean, I actually have no clue because reading the notes, like, past few days, I was like, yeah, Vamana's probably going to be dead or, like, not gonna be picked. Like I think he'll actually be like in a state where you can pick him like in a rank game or something, and you'll you'll go off. But like he's not gonna be first pick, first ban in SPO. Mm -hmm. Maybe if someone's like really proficient at mana, like where they just like mana a lot, like Ducky or something, maybe they'll be like they'll pick, like prioritize him. But um, yeah. Uh, I I mean based off scrims, I mean uh, we got pretty owned so by by mana. But so I I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. But um, it's hard to tell. But actually, I just have no idea. Honestly, I. I I'm guessing maybe it's like a medium nerf, mm -hmm. which maybe is good. Maybe it'll be um, it'll be balanced. But I think his items are just. I, I think like the the phalanx the phalanx um, mm -hmm. buff kind of just like like reverted like the nerf he got almost. Um, mm. Yeah, but the yeah, early game nerf is definitely something. really nice. Yeah, the the early game uh, bug fix on his ult is like super nice uh, when you're playing versus him. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yep. And uh, important for jungle Vamana not getting as much of a shield because it's max hp um that's right yeah so you know the crit vamana builds won't get quite as much shield which is definitely nice um yeah yeah talk to me about phalanx looking actually purchasable to you uh to you now do you think it's like good enough that it will set what is meta in solo at least for the next week yeah i think um i think it's probably gonna be op i'll be honest i think it's like it's mm -hmm. gonna be bought a lot but I mean, only certain gods can utilize it. Because I mean, if you're a tier with phalanx, I mean, it's not going that crazy. Mm -hmm. But like, it, it's just like 81 um, phys D and 30% attack speed and 200 health for a very low cost. It's like pretty good on anyone. Mm -hmm. But it's like the attack speed, like it's not going to feel like, overwhelming, um, except for people like Vamana, maybe like Ama, maybe Herc, stuff like that. That can like utilize the attack speed. But I definitely think it'll be bought a lot. Like probably, I mean, maybe every game now. We'll see. Mm -hmm. um, Do. You if if yeah. phalanx becomes super strong though do you think that there's a world where you just don't pick gods who are going to auto attack you a lot like uh, you just won't have to auto attack the enemy god a whole lot like if they build yeah. phalanx and you just pick like i mean xing chen would would just lose you pressure instantly but um yeah wukong like, Cth like cthulhu or something yeah, yeah cthulhu wukong. like those are gods that the the cleave like uh, attacks from someone like cthulhu could like troll you a little bit i guess but yeah um i don't know like i wonder i, I do wonder if that is like a built-in counter to that item is that in order to get the passive you have to get basic attack so it's really good against gods like hercules or you know osiris yeah. who's not particularly meta bologna who's not particularly meta but like those types of gods who are going to incidentally hit you with basics yeah. uh it kind of counters them but like or do you think that the stats are just so good that even if you only get base attacked every so often that it you're gonna get value out of it? Yeah, I think it's still gonna be good, like even if it's so often. Um, also because you rotate to a team fight and it's like someone's gotta hit you at some point, right? Like sure. a hunter or something. So like you're gonna have it in team fights. Um, and also, um, if you're if you're gonna be um, in a lane for someone and they can't auto attack you that seems like a pretty good item you know like <laughs> sure like oh like, i can't like you know like if you're if you're intentionally trying to like you know like pick a god or you know um do something that you can't auto attack them then you, you it seems like you already lost the lane so you should probably just build it yourself you know mm -hmm. and then you both have it and it's even you know so um yeah i mean at least you can both have cost? it like 2200 i think wow it's cheap yeah, huh? so, yeah so like, like 81 50 200 health <laughs> 20 hp 5 I like how you were talking earlier and so you were like, it's only 81 prots, and I was like, surely it costs a decent amount. Like, 81 <laughs> fist prots. Yeah. Okay. Simply yeah. don't basic attack him three times, Spara. Yeah, just don't. Yeah, just don't I mean, him. yeah, I think I think there might need to be, like, a cost um, a cost increase. Sure. Uh, yeah, increase a little bit. We'll, I mean, we'll, we'll see, but um, 
<laughs> Listen, Most a lot of times, w- once an item starts getting bought, it, it's just like gods, like you were talking about earlier, like Yorm's just gotten a lot of buffs, and gods like Herc, Guan, Serdanos mm-hmm. is a good example. Like, these are gods that just like, everyone was like, they're bad, they're bad, they're bad. They get buff one, buff two, buff three, buff four. Yep. All of a sudden, they've crossed the threshold, and then even after we nerf them past the point where they're, you know, beyond where they got buff one... They're yeah. still busted, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, it's always so funny. Yeah, because like there's so many gods that you know, um, like no one knows are like actually OP. Yeah. Um, there's probably so many examples, but I can't really think of any. But, um, like, uh, you know, and, and then one thing I actually like I I I dislike that I, I don't enjoy is like when an, an item or god is like you know considered not good, mm-hmm. but it's like that kind of niche. So like for example, Bloodforge. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm, yeah. Uh, like Blood Forge got buffed a lot, and then ever like like no one really bought it. People bought it like for fun, or like maybe like as like a last item, if you like Thanos or something. Right. But then it got buffed, and then everyone started buying it, and then it got nerfed into the ground. Like it got 50, or it was still like, okay. Like it had fifty five power, but you know, um, it, it it just felt worse to build than it did like before any buffs at all. Right. And so that's why I was a fan of the revert because like the revert actually made it so, um, it's just you know it's just where it was before, mm-hmm. and so I think that's a good spot. So now it's not gonna like be bought a lot, but it'll be bought like niche mm-hmm. um and i think it's it's fun when that like when when like reverts happen or like um i think it's kind of like not fun when like a god or an item is just you know uh buffed a lot and then after like a, like a few months there's nerfed into the ground right yeah yeah i agree yeah, yeah. no I, I i think no one really is a huge fan of that um yeah it just players are players of, of all levels it's not just like pro players like just players yeah. are stubborn like once they've gotten this idea that this god is best at this thing or really good in this situation like you yeah. have to really convince them to try something else um <laughs> yeah that's true and uh it can be difficult to do so but you know failing ends up being too strong easy nerf cannon you know lots lots of things to uh to potentially nerf the same thing goes for cannoneers uh i think cannoneers is probably going to be pretty prevalent if i had to guess uh it goes down to 2000 gold you now get to give bonus gold to your nearest ally every seven seconds instead of every uh what 15 it was before Uh, or yeah Yeah. every 20 um any uh any general thoughts here barry on cannoneers uh i won't be kicking hurry out of lane as often there you go everyone's happy yeah I mean, actually, I don't even know if that'll be, like, that, like, super good. I think it actually might be, like, a great buff to where, like, it might be in a great spot to where, like, you can buy it sometimes if you want to, like, I don't know, sit, like, sit next to the ADC and give him farm. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you're, like, Nox or something or, like, Maui or something. You just want to, like, clear waves. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be cool if it was, like, a, a soul lane item and, like, you just, like, floor go the gold, but you just you just keep clearing the wave. Like, I built it on a rack key one time, <laughs> and I couldn't clear a wave. So I just, just... <laughs> Pop them. Yeah, why not? Yeah. yeah, and it does more more magic damage, right? Yeah, uh, per level. Ten, so, yeah, so, like, maybe, you know, <laughs> you're, like, you're, like, level 8 or something, you just auto, auto the wave, and they just take, like, you know, like, 120 damage or something. But Wait, question. Um, when that says your nearest ally, is that in a range or yes. is that just map wide? Yeah. yeah, it's in yeah. a range. It's in it's in within <laughs> assist range. Yeah. That'd be crazy. I was like, to, imagine you yeah. five, five cannoneers. <laughs> You're like, wait, I gotta oh. take one more step towards solo lane so I can get this yeah. gold like real quick. <laughs> don't don't <laughs> auto until they get off speed. Like yeah, yeah, no, that would be yeah. you'd see five cannoneers instantly if yeah. that if that's how it worked. Yeah. And, uh, I, and I do think um it's probably like i think if support or items get nerfed like next patch like next season uh i can see the cannoneers like being bought like every single game because i think like right now like you buy that and you delay your uh your auras and stuff like if they mm-hmm. build like prophetic into thebes they have like you know crazy auras and like a lot of prods they're unkillable where you have you know you have gold and like a, some decent stats but i think um like right now it's like these are, like the aura items and like this is like can like cannoneers and mm-hmm. it's like Eventually, like you're gonna nerf these down, and then you know, Canyons is gonna be like bought equally or more than you know, I the support aura. So, yeah, I could, yeah, I, I could agree. see that happen. Yeah, you uh, you might think it sounds fun to have that be a solo item, but when Sobek solo is top pick, top oh, man no, again, no, and no, because no, he just no, gets no. to oh, you're right, you're right, clear the mind. wave. 
It's not going to be super fun. But maybe, maybe, you know, we'll... Uh, I'll stay with my hurt for Mon a minute, actually. Yeah, You're that, right. That, yeah. <laughs> Look, I've... Can, all right, I've, fi- I've fixed the balance. There you go. Yep. You're, well, wel- You're welcome, Reddit. The grass is greener. Here. The grass is greener <laughs> right where we're standing. Exactly. It actually is. Um, all right, almost time for a random question of the week. But before we do, uh, we were talking about cooking earlier and how Sot should actually stop to himself from cooking. <laughs> and... Someone in chat reminded me that it would be a great idea for you, Sot, since you're not going to be cooking, to hit up Factor Meals. And here's a bunch of words about why. During the prime spring season, you need wholesome, convenient meals to energize you for warmer, more active days and to keep you on track reaching your goals. Also, it lets you not pick troll picks in the solo lane and instead makes you become the meta slave that every team wants out of their solo laner. Factor, America's number one ready to eat meal kit. I don't know. We don't really do like thumbnails for our YouTube videos, but we should just for that, just for that face alone. That was great work, son. Uh, Factor, America's number one ready to eat meal kit can help you fuel up fast with ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and tackle everything on your to-do list. Too busy to cook this May? With Factor, skip the trip to the grocery store and skip the chopping, prepping, and most importantly, at least to me, the cleaning up too. The cleanup is absolutely the worst part. Uh, Look, there's so many great options with Factor. There's a bunch of different types of meals you can get, including vegan and veggie meals. Uh, And if you're looking to mix it up, you can even add a protein to certain vegan and veggie meals to try something out a little bit new. Um, they have 34 plus chef prepared dietitian approved weekly options. There's always something new to try. Plus you can round out your meal and replenish your snack supply with an assortment of over 45 add-ons, including breakfast items like our delicious cinnamon apple pancakes. That sounds actually legitimately oh, really good. I'm so hungry. Bacon and cheddar egg bites and potato bacon and egg breakfast skillet or for an easy wellness boost. You can try refreshing beverage options like cold press juices, shakes, and smoothies. Look, Factor has been a sponsor of the podcast for a long time. Their stuff is legitimately delicious, and you should absolutely give it a shot. So head on over to factormeals.com slash backliners50 and use code backliners50 to get 50% off your first box. That's bat. That's code backliners fifty five zero at factormeals.com slash backliners fifty to get fifty percent off your first box. Big shout out to the homies over at Factor Meals. Okay, speaking of the homies, time for a random question of the week, which is brought to you by our Patreon Discord, patreon.com slash backliners, if you want to support the show there. Uh Dream Martini asks, What's your go-to comfort show to watch? They've watched The Office like eight times. It's a great question. Uh, Saw so you got a comfort show? Bro. Mm. Uh, let's see. Okay, so Office, honestly, I watched it only one time, but I was like, it was like, it was so nice. I literally loved it. Like, I, I, you know, I, um, every time I watched it, I would just like feel comfortable. So, like, yeah, maybe that's, that's maybe that's your one. It's definitely, it's definitely comfortable, but you know, I've only seen it one time, though, is a thing. I think, what have I seen? Okay, Breaking Bad is definitely my comfort show. Breaking Bad for sure. That's a um, comfort. I feel like that's an in, such an intense show. <laughs> it is pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty intense. But I've seen it like four times at this point. So fair like enough. Through. I've not seen Better Call Saul though, and I've heard Better Call Saul is better than Breaking Bad. I'm like, there's no way. That's but, it. I, mean, I have, to, I have, I have also not seen Better Call Saul, and I have also heard that. Uh, I don't yeah. think I've ever full full transparency. I have never watched all of Breaking Bad. I've seen like wow. a good amount. It was obviously yeah. great. Um, I'm going to finish it one of these days. Gotcha. One of these, one of these days. days. Yeah. Uh, Barry, you got a comfort show? I do not have a comfort show because I hate rewatching things. Um, Dang. That being said, uh, I have probably watched The Office eight times because that is <laughs> Destiny's comfort show. Uh-huh. And uh, it is always on regardless of uh, <laughs> what's happening. So yep. uh, I've seen the vast majority of The Office when I've never put it on myself. <laughs> Look, oh, that's funny. you just, a comfort show is perfect for just turning it on. You stay on your phone the whole time. You like barely look up. You're doing things around the house, whatever it is, but you just have like a, a nice background noise that you look. Uh, my, uh, for my wife and I, it's Arrested Development. Uh, we've watched the first three seasons only, of course. Uh, yeah, I've never heard of that. Oh, if you haven't watched Arrested Development, yeah, good. it is one of the funniest shows ever made. It is oh. unbelievably funny. Uh, 
and we love it. We quote it all the time. Highly recommend Arrested Development. You're, and it's only three seasons. You're going to be able to slam that real quick. Oh, it's so. crazy reviews. Yeah, Michael Cera. Oh. Yes, dude. Jason Bateman, Will Arnett. Like, oh, it's, I'm legitimately jealous you haven't watched it. Because <laughs> getting to experience yeah. good things for the first time is like such an awesome feeling. And true. you and you still have that for Arrested Development. I'm jealous of that, but I still have it for Breaking Bad. So you know you that can true, yeah. be jealous of me and for the same we, reason. We both have it for Better Call Saul. So and we both have it for Better Call Saul. That's right. There's so much yeah. to look forward to. In life. Yeah. Uh, Wait, so go ahead. How about how about like movies? Like, do you guys have a comfort movie, or like a movie you like really like? That you always rewatch? Um, I don't rewatch a ton of movies. What was? The, <laughs> I was about to say, what is the last movie I re like? I've seen a bunch that I rewatched, and it was 100% Shrek 2. Uh, what? I definitely re. Shrek. You've never seen Shrek? I've never seen Shrek. Bro, what? Shrek oh, and Shrek bro. Two are the undisputed goat animated movies. Mm. Undisputed. Really? Undisputed. Yeah, they're really good. Really good. They're wow. legitimately really good. Like I'm not sure. Well, man. Okay, I gotta watch it then. Yeah. Next movie yeah, night with the boys. You do. You th- you toss on Shrek. Everyone's gonna be <laughs> loving it. Okay, okay. Okay. That's okay. But what what do you got, Barry? You got a you got a comfort movie? Uh, I would say when I was younger, it was without a paddle. I genuinely liked that movie. It was really funny. It had like a lot of like teenage humor in it. I don't know. I that. don't. I don't think I have an adult comfort movie because I I genuinely don't like watching things again because it's. I don't know why. I just I can't stand it. Like I get so like bored almost, or I don't want to. Yeah. I want to like pay attention to something and have like new information coming towards me, and when I rewatch something, I get like really bored or like uninterested. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't want to be like on my phone the whole time because that just mm-hmm. feels bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I wish I did get enjoyment out of that because a lot of people do, and I just I'm always missing out. Mm-hmm. Well, you can all you got to do is start, Barry. That's all you got to do. Saad, do you have a comfort uh, movie? Yeah, I'd probably say Interstellar. I've seen it. Probably uh, about 20 times. I was going to say, I bet you I know because yeah, you tweet about yeah, it all the time. I've yeah, also not years. seen Interstellar. Uh, what? I know. Oh I know. my yeah. God. You've got to see it. I'm not going to lie. I've never watched it because it was like three hours long and I was like, I don't want to dedicate that long okay. to a movie. Dang. That it's, is, you, it's yeah. worth it. Is okay. Destiny like Joe, where she, Joe is physically incapable of watching a three hour movie? She can't do it. She will fall asleep out of, out of spite, like in protest. She will just get up and leave, like. Yeah, she doesn't want to go to if, yeah. when we're talking about going to see a movie in theater she's like how long is it if i say over two and a half hours if i say over two hours she's like oh my god it's so that's long. how i am two hours is the maximum really? for a movie for me and then i just i it there's it better be like a really good movie if you're buying yeah. that much of my time so what yeah, i'm so the reason true. i'm asking is because so, is there a good like point to pause it and pick it up the next night like halfway uh-huh. through interstellar um, can you get can you like figure yeah. out like a a break yeah. point for us because that i think i could sell my wife on watching the movie if i can say all we've got to do is get through an hour and a half you know what i mean yeah. like we can do so that. yeah so uh actually the first time i wa- the first time i watched it actually i watched it with my mom and she also like went to bed while we were watching mm-hmm. it and we got about halfway through so like the first act i won't, I won't explode too yeah, much, but yeah the first act is basically um like they're on earth and stuff and then like they go like they go into space eventually and then um uh around like maybe the halfway maybe like maybe like 40 percent of the way through mm-hmm. is where like i like we stopped watching maybe around that and then um my mom went to bed i'm like okay i'm screw it, i'm finishing this and i finished it i'm like wow this is great and i watched it again the next day <laughs> and i watched it again the next day and then i wow. watched it i watched it again the same day after that so i watched it, like four wow. times in a week yeah um but You're it, going it's, good. it's like it was like a, it's like an experience, you know. I usually don't do that, but it was sure. like, I like I went to bed like thinking about it. I'm like, wow, I, I dreamt about it. I woke up and I thought about it, and I watched it again. And I went to bed and I dreamt about it, and I woke up and then thought about it, and I watched it again. And it's like it's just like a <laughs> it's, just, it's just a crazy movie. I don't know. It's like an infection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. But like I can I can't re- rewatch movies like by myself. I have to do it with someone else. Like sure. in that case, I watched it with my mom finish it, and I'm like, okay, I'll rewatch it with my mom, and I watched it with my mom, and I'm like, I was like telling my friends like you we get, we, have, we have to watch this, and then we watched it, and you know. Yeah, so like I can never rewatch a movie by myself, but I like to see like my friends' reaction to like you know, a movie or like what they think of it and stuff like that. So sure. that's like why I rewatch movies. Yeah, yeah. fair yeah. enough. It's a good question. That's a good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's go on to Hiru's question, uh, who just said that they were just proposed to by their significant other. Congratulations, Hiru. That's, 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 that's huge. That's Congrats. That's huge. Nice. Uh, 
let's so hold on i gotta read to get to the question here oh there actually isn't a question they were just stoked hero is is our uh consistent question maker they always bring a bunch of really good questions to the podcast so no question this week uh i don't think from them but that's because they're stoked and celebrating their engagement so congratulations hero and to you and your friends um spataz asks what's a a feel-good artist that you listen to that just puts you in a good positive mood uh, their wife mm. just turned them on to Bryce Vine, and they haven't been able to turn him off since. Mm. Uh, let me scroll a little. Good, a good mood. I've got a lot of really good in a bad mood bands. Um, like when I'm in a bad <laughs> mood Same. bands, I want to listen to those. Like I've got, yeah. I can name five off the cuff uh, right away for good mood. I would say the Rocket Summer. This is the first one that comes to mind for me. Mm. That's uh, a classic. Uh, oh. Emo kids of the early 2000s should recognize that band. Um, and uh, and they're a good one. So I would say The Rocket Summer. Uh, you actually helped me with my answer. Um, since I was an emo scene kid growing up, um, I've been listening to like an all-time low We The Kings. Yeah, all-time low is a and- great one. Yeah, anytime in a bad mood, I throw that playlist on. It's got, like, the main on it as well. It's just, like, happy, cheery music, because normally I listen to, like, really hard metal now. Uh-huh. Um, and that just, it, it cheers me up. I like it a lot. There you go. That's a good answer. Sot? So, for me, it's kind of weird, because I don't actually listen to, like, artists mainly. Or, like, I listen to songs, but I don't have, like, an artist I just, like, have all their songs in. I think the only artist is Alan Walker, hmm. but I, I don't listen to that that much anymore. I'd probably say, because, like, for me, I like, every single song in my entire playlist, I have a memory to it. So, mm-hmm. or, like, a memory, a person, or, like, um, like a time or, like, a setting to it. So, like, for example, at Worlds, I was playing this song. Uh, it was, like, one of, like, the, the Batman, the, the Dark Knight Rises uh, soundtrack. Mm-hmm. So, I'm, I'm a big fan of, like, movie soundtracks. So, I was playing that a lot. And so, every time I listen to that, I get good memories because, you know, like, Worlds is really fun. Sure. Um, stuff like that. So, usually it, it changes, but... I'd probably say like Hans Zimmer, like who made Interstellar, the Interstellar yep. soundtrack, and a few other soundtracks. He does really good stuff, so I, I really enjoy like that. Um, or like Alan Walker, I guess, because it's like you know like uh, EDM type stuff, so it's like pretty like uplifting. Yeah, yeah EDM's really good for uplifting. It's a, yeah. that's, a, that's a great answer. Uh, here's a recommendation that's gonna hit both of you simultaneously. Uh, okay. This because uh, you made me think of it. There was there's only like one soundtrack song that I would listen to all the time. But it was my, like, song that I would use to get focused right before, like, a world's cast or something like that. And it's uh, called BFG Division from the Doom soundtrack. Uh, And it's a metal, it's a metal soundtrack song. But it is, that, like, just thinking about it, I just instantly, like, I get some goosebumps. Like, that song got me so pumped, like, more than any other song I've ever heard. And I would always just listen to it on repeat. Like, normally before uh like if we were just casting regular season or whatever i I could be in the middle of a conversation about literally anything walk away put on the headset cast like focus focus to the right amount but before like a finals cast or world's qualifier match or something like really big i would like to put in my headphones for like five minutes beforehand and just like not talk to anyone just really like get in my zone and i would just listen to that song on repeat so big recommendation for that one um and then finally sorry go ahead one more is the the Lonely Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny. Lonely Island's a good one. I listened to them one. recently, yeah. and I was just laughing the whole time. Oh, they're so. pretty old, right? Like, I remember yeah, they kid, are. Like, I see them on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> it was so funny. Dude, the, yeah. our uh, our team, uh, like our Discord, just had a big, uh, and I threw it on the ground, like quote <laughs> session. Like yeah. we just all yeah. in turn said the entire song like back to back because we just all remembered it. Uh, That's pretty funny an iconic video um yeah. all right neon kerm finishing us up with have you ever watched a movie so bad you left the theater during the movie and if so what yes. movie was it? that's a great question neon that's a great question we did not leave uh, the theater for the one that i'm thinking of but <clears throat> my wife and i went to go see sausage party when we had just moved to georgia yeah. and anyone who knows me uh, especially off camera knows that I am by no means a prude. Like I'm down to say some of the worst shit you've ever heard in your entire life. That's the first time I've sworn on this podcast in so long. Oops. But it's just like, that's just how it is. Like I'm <laughs> yeah. down to just like joke. Like I'm about it. 
that movie, like, it just, it, it just wasn't, specifically the ending of that movie, I was just like, this is, no part of this is funny to me in any way. I'm just mm-hmm. deeply uncomfortable. Uh, I'm just so uncomfortable. I just, I, I don't, I don't want to be watching this anymore. And we legitimately considered leaving. Um, in high school, I remember we went to go see Jackass 3. And I brought my wife. We were not dating at the time. It was, uh, we just went and saw it and she almost walked out and I, I wouldn't, I did not blame her cause there was some really gross stuff in that movie. Uh, but that's the closest I think I've ever come to, to walking out of a movie was during sa- the ending of sausage party. Uh, well, uh, I do I, not recommend that movie. It was not worth it. In my opinion. I have walked out, uh, and it was to disaster movie. Uh, 2008 movie. I went with uh, CJ to the movie theater. Uh huh. And we left after about 40 minutes because it was like genuinely the worst movie I have ever seen. Uh, really? Yeah. Most these movies, I... the disaster movie it... was like in the scary movie, like, yeah. uh, um, what's the right Basically... word? Like parody movies. Like, it yeah. was a parody. Gotcha. Yeah. And those either hit or, like, yeah, they, they, they missed sometimes. Yeah, it would make, basically make fun of all the current events or all, like, the actors or actresses that were struggling with, like, certain things. And all of the jokes just weren't funny. It was, like, really forced humor, like, nothing witty, Jeez. nothing, like, intelligent, like, very, like, basic level, like, kindergarten, like, yeah jokes. And I just, we hated it. And thankfully, we got our money back and we were able to watch another movie. But I, like... If you want to watch a movie that is genuinely terrible, watch that movie and try wait, to make it through the entire a, wait. disaster okay. movie. Disaster movie, okay. Yeah, I'll link it in here. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do uh, it. It's going to be a challenge. Dude, did you watch genuinely Meet the... Genuinely terrible. From the same year, did you watch the movie Meet the Spartans? It was like the parody on 300. I don't think so. I'm that not. was our first parody we watched. and. Oh, if you didn't watch the old scary movies, like the the parody scary movies those were legit some of the early ones were legitimately funny when we were kids mm-hmm. like i don't know if they probably wouldn't be funny to me now but those were good meet the spartans i remember distinctly watching it in my best friend's basement when we were in high school and it was like it was exactly what you're describing about the disaster movie it was just like an absolute abomination it was so <laughs> deeply unfunny that like i could not believe that we we just we couldn't even get through it like making fun of it the whole time. That's yeah, how you know yeah. something's really bad. When even watching it ironically and making fun of it, like we couldn't do it. It wasn't even fun. Uh it was so bad. Well. Wow. Yeah, this disaster movie got one percent on the tomato meter and a twenty one percent on the audience score, which is kind of impressive for how bad that movie was. <laughs> no, hey. Uh, got something out there for everyone. One percent. You know? That's how it goes. Uh, Saad, how about you? Did you ever walk out of a movie theater? I never walked out. No, um, I, I used to, I, I go to a lot of movie theaters, like or see movies with my mom usually, but I've mm-hmm. never walked out of one. But um, there was one movie my mom wanted to see. It was last year. Um, it's called um, Moonfall, and I didn't think it was like that bad. Like, I mean, I, I watched the trailer and I kind of knew like what to expect. Mm-hmm. But wait, it's got seventy percent audience review. What the heck? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> they loved it. Yeah, but I mean, it, like, it, it's one of those movies you don't take too seriously. But like, the shit was just going insane. Like, the moon was like, like, <laughs> I don't know what the f- is going on. Like, the moon was like, like so the aliens were like inside the moon, and like it was called like something was causing it to like crash into Earth, and like like the gravity was like, like everything was like flying everywhere because of, like the gravity was like getting like messed up or something, and like, <laughs> what? Uh, and like. I don't know, like David Pena was in that movie, so like you know, <laughs> so like it was just like funny seeing him like drive a, drive a Lexus in like some like like apo- like almost like apocalyptic like like right. landscape, and yeah. like it was so like there was like a lot of space parts that were so unrealistic. Like one of them was um like they stole a like the, the the space shuttle like the NASA space shuttle from like a museum, and then they just like <laughs> they just put on a launch pad and then it's launched up with like three people like three guys like orchestrated a. a or a rocket launch to the moon. And well, like, yeah, I mean, anyone can like, do it. Yeah, it's like they, they, they just, it's like they were in, like they got into the spaceship and like blasted off. It was crazy, and I'm like, what? This, is, this is like what is yeah, like everything was like flooding, everything was going crazy. I was like, I just didn't know what, what was going on, well, and 
Like, go ahead. I, I looked it up on IMDb, and I have to just read the first two sentences of the storyline uh, yeah. that is written here, because it's corroborating literally everything you're saying. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> In Moonfall, a mysterious force knocks the moon from its orbit around Earth and sends it hurtling on a collision course with life as we know it. With mere <laughs> weeks before impact in the world on the brink of annihilation, NASA executive and former astronaut Joe Fowler is convinced she has the key to saving us all, but only one astronaut from her past and a conspiracy theorist believe her. That's the that's the story. What? Yeah, yeah. Like some guy was like some crazy crazy conspiracy theorist, and he's like, and he's just like, I don't know. He's just like, he has all these pictures on the wall, and he's like, he's like, oh my god, I can't believe the moon's actually falling down. And like I have to, I have to warn them, and he like he goes to like warn NASA, and like no one believes him, and it's just it's just crazy. So like, funny, like just yeah. just insane. With weeks on the brink of annihilation, like yeah. What is what do you think people are doing in those weeks and uh, on Earth? Like you see the moon, yeah, like orbiting and everything's terrible and all that stuff and you're just like yeah. all right i'm not going to are you guys showing up to scrims i'm i'm not working <laughs> no <laughs> shot yeah, for real. Yeah. no shot and if we all survive in five years i'd be like what's this gap in your resume i'll be like i thought the world was over like i didn't want to <laughs> well, work you see a gap in your resume. <laughs> yeah like what do you I, what do you mean like i didn't care i just thought the the moon was in a on a c- crash course with life itself like um, yeah i'm not and, working like, the, the ending was so like it was so crazy like it was just like super cheesy but i mean like if you go in having like a, if you go in with like low expectations like it's it, it'll be fun but it's like mm-hmm. you know yeah like just i was just thinking like like imagine writing this like this story and you're like yeah, yeah let's do it like you know like <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> someone was just on some good stuff and they were just looking up at the yeah. moon and they were like yeah. what if it just like fell like yeah. what would happen if it just like yeah. if it just yeah. fell over? Too much, too much, uh, too much good stuff in the writer's room, I guess. Yeah. Well, <laughs> some would say never enough, but there's yeah, there's I some evidence so. to the contrary. All right, that'll do it for this week's episode. Uh, shout out to to Sot. Thanks for coming on, man. Um, check out his coming. Twitter and his streams. He's streaming all the time. Um, so plenty of great content to check out over there. Especially if you want to check out all the new solo lane stuff that we discussed on this week's episode. Uh, final week of the SPL regular season is coming up and then it's master's time, which is, uh, which is pretty crazy. So that should be fun to watch. Um, shout out to Oakley. Oakley.com is our, is our new sponsor on the podcast. And of course, factormeals.com slash backliners 50 is the other one. Uh, great way to support the show there. Um, we'll be back next week with more, uh, podcast action. I do suppose, uh, Barry, you know what to do. Bye. Okay. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. Not bad. That was fun.